But what we see more particular in this case is that the work of re Reformation is never done. It never gets to the point in this world where it can be said the Reformation is over. Instead, there can be seasons and epochs where great things are established, but even in our own denomination's heritage and history, we can see it, for instance, in Scotland. You have the initial beginnings of the Reformation in the 1550s, formally established by confession in 1560, and yet in many ways not fully established until 1592, and the Charter of Presbytery is granted, and worship is going forth, and yet anyone who is aware with the history of the Church of Scotland will realize that from that day until 1638, there is massive upheaval taking place, and there's corruptions entering in, and the godly are laboring again and again until finally 1638 comes, and then the Westminster Assembly and further reform, and yet infightings and trials and difficulties and troubles seek to ravage the church and cast her down. There are turncoats who turn from their vowed adherence to the scriptures and the Reformation and so on, who become the very enemies and leaders of the killing times. These things take place. And so, brethren, we ought never to think that the season of Reformation is an easy season, whether for the people who, by God's grace, are leading that, or for the people who, by God's grace, are desiring it. When we pray for things like Reformation, we should, in one way, realize that we're praying for difficulties. Now, it's not that we're literally praying, Lord, make it difficult for us. But when Reformation is taking place, whether at a very individual level, or in a family, or congregation, or more uh, widespread level, we realize that when the Lord is reforming things, it's like setting a broken bone. It's not pleasant in and of itself, but the benefit of it is truly acknowledged.